get older and get these things. Now, I did have a I did have a nice playing hand, and uh, uh, but now it's many bets to me, so I obviously have to fold it. What did you have? Uh, I had ace the spades. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna. You'd be happy to call the first race with it, but maybe not the second and the third. Yeah. So I'm gonna type. Let people know I'm recording this for poker tube in the chat. Um, but actually, you know, as bad if I'd had anything even a little better, I would have just gotten it all in here because I told you I'm trying to play fast. Yeah. But ace eight of spades against that kind of action, you know, you're so often going to be up against ace king. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I'm up against Ace King and a pair of Jacks, then obviously I don't have much hope unless I had two eights or, or spades. Ah, cool. So it's not even when I'm playing fast, that's not the kind of hand I want to. Okay, well, I've had all you know pretty decent hands. Now I've got Ace Three of Spades, so I'll take a I'll take a, a flop with that. Rachel's asking what I'm saying about her. <laughs> That's funny. Talking about, speaking about a person in third person or whatever you call it. <laughs> um, okay, I flopped the nut flush draw. Yeah, the eight three of spades, yeah. Yeah. Now, the good news is I flopped the nut flush draw, which is a hand you usually play fast. The bad news is there's a pair on the board, so sometimes you make your full house. And the guy makes, uh, or sorry, you make your flush and the guy makes a full house. Yeah. So you don't like to play this hand that fast with a pair on the board, but we're going to play this one fast anyway. And hope, I mean, obviously, the guy bet enough that he doesn't have kings full. Yeah. There's a decent chance he has a king. Now he yeah. folded right there. I mean, it's very common, of course, when the, the flop comes paired, so many players bets out. And, and I mean, if you're playing against a good player seven times out of ten or even eight, he doesn't have it. He just do that because he usually gets a fold, right? Well, I don't know that he doesn't have it. Uh, it's you know three. It was a three-handed flop, and uh, you know three people took the flop. I don't know what betting out was going to accomplish. You know, sometimes the guy. Well, when we say he doesn't have it, if if he uh, he might just have, let's say, a pair. Yeah, in his hand, and he figures that's good. Or if he had a bad king, and I were raised him there, he wouldn't want to commit all his chips. But it's I I, I think it's a it's a pretty good and and um, it's a pretty good tip. Uh, I mean, when the flop comes with, for example, three clubs, or the flop the flop comes with a pair on the board, it's a pretty good op um, opportunity to re-raise against someone who bets out straight out. Don't you think? Yeah, I think you have to take it player by player, but yeah, it, it does happen. Uh, you know, I remember your Scandinavian heritage, which means uh, that you're going to raise no matter what happens anyway. Um, but, uh, okay, I only have Queen Jack offsuit. I'm going to give this one up. Although maybe actually now, now that I look at it, maybe I should have four bet the guy because I want to play fast. You always have to be aware, especially in this day and age, when you raise in the cutoff and the guy in the button re-raises you. Yeah. Because it's not necessarily you know, a good hand. He might just have some suited connector or something like that. Yeah. So you always like to get a good feel for how frequently people are three are three betting you when you raise in late position. Yeah. And if they're three betting you a lot, then you just you know come back over the top, just you know, you know, let them know you're getting the chips in. And so often, these people who three bet, they don't like being four bet. I mean, nobody does when they don't have it. But I found so often the people, it's it's kind of like the uh, being a bully on the playground. That bully doesn't like being bullied. Yeah. And you might think, oh, this guy's real loose. Well, he's loose on the raising end, but he's not necessarily on the calling end. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Now, um, um, we talked about you, you played quite a few W Coop events so far. Now, while you're in London, have you checked the schedule to see how many more you're going to be able to play or something like that? 
Um, the only thing I looked at, I noticed the 25K heads up is on the 19th in the main event and the uh, uh, and the horse. There's a big horse in the main event. Those are after it. So I'm aware of that, and I'm aware there's a conflict, and I'll kind of take those when they come. I'm going to almost definitely play those. Um, you know, we'll see what happens if I happen to get a hold of chips in uh, the, this PLO event number two or event number three. That's probably where the conflicts are. But two sixes again. Um, but if I have to go without sleep, I'll go without sleep. Yeah, you've done that before. Yeah. It's, you know, at each year, I guess it's a little harder as I'm getting older. Yeah, I was just about to say, I mean, let's say... 15 years ago or 10 years ago and when you played a lot of live big games uh, and and found a juicy table was it common for you how common was it for you to stay up all night and play around the clock i if i was winning a, and it was a good game i wouldn't quit i mean 24 hours is nothing to me no but now i don't play 24 hours anymore no even if it's a, a very good table I was laughing. Well, 24 is about the limit. I try actually not to stay up for 24 hours anymore. Maybe 20 is the most. Yeah. Uh, for a couple reasons. One is health reasons. And uh, the other is I just don't play that well after I'm up for about 20 hours. Um, you know, my... Uh, my game just deteriorates too much. You know, the combination of 20 hours and being uh, over 50 is just not that good a combination. Because I end up competing against guys who are like 25 to 30 years old, and they're just stronger than I am at this point. And, I, and of course, there, there, there are new options coming up later on to play at the same stakes and at sort of the same tables. I mean, compared to 15 years ago, maybe you found a, a super table with some business guys that came in with a lot of money, then you had to take the opportunity, right? Well, I don't think that's any different now because you know we've had a uh, you know a downturn in poker that's been connected to the uh, you know global economy downturn, yeah. and so you know I go into the commerce on a regular basis. That's the you know live casino near where I live. Yeah, and in I limit section. It's a ghost town. I often end up playing just some small Chinese poker while I'm there, waiting for a mixed game to form. Yeah, uh, or you know I'll go home and. Or yeah, or I'll or I'll go home and play online. Whereas in the heyday of the commerce, there were always several, uh, you know, four and eight hundred, you know, two four and eight hundred games going on at all times. Mm. With you know, decent stake to play. Now it's like, you know, that's a rarity that only comes up during the commerce tournament. Okay. I mean, uh, one part is the economy. The other part is, don't you think? Uh, that the online high stakes tables has become pretty good. What do you think? Well, I don't want to say that because the commerce testified against it in commerce in Congress, and they uh, obviously are feeling uh, competition. I actually don't think that's it because even online we're having trouble with some of the higher stakes games. Yeah, you're right. So I, I don't think that's it at all. I think it's more of the economy. I yeah, well, there are private games. That's true, Alex says. But I think it's more that there's just not that discretionary money. Uh, I still think, uh, with regard to online poker, I think it's generated more players for the casinos than it's taken away. Yeah. You know, obviously, you know, there are people playing online. We know that at home. But this is nowadays where people learn to play poker is online. You're right. They can kind of learn in a non-intimidating uh, environment in the privacy of their own home. Play, they can play real. They can play play money. Yeah. They start there, then they can play for you know small, you know one cent, two cent, and people who like the social aspect of it. Once they've learned the mechanics of playing poker, they go in and they play in a live casino if there's one in their area. Yeah. So uh, I don't in any way think that we're taking players away. Uh, even though we know that people will be playing at home, but it's generating more players than it's taking away. And and most of the people who live near a live casino are like myself, 
where they're, they're going to play when they just want to get on, hop on, and play something. They'll play online, and when they want to go out and play live, they'll play live. Yeah. You know, I do both, and I would guess that I put in the same amount of hours live and online. Okay, I've got King Queen off suit. I've got a Brennus. And, and I have three better. If I don't disconnect, I'm playing fast. And he's got a funny amount of chips where if he calls, he's got a lot of his chips in the middle. You know, he's going to have more than 10% of his stack in the middle. And so he, you know, he may end up just going on at this point if he has a good hand. Well, that's even that's even worse. Yeah. He four, but I mean, eighteen hundred. I think I'm going to have to give it up because, uh, you know, it's you know, four betting more than half his chips is kind of scary. Yeah. So I played my hand as a bluff, and the good news is when you're, when things are going well, and you're gambling to miss your meeting. I was hoping someone to raise again. I have two kings here. So you want to, it's nice if you get a loose image and then you start. Yeah, picking perfect. Up it's hands. perfect. You're, you're racing and folding. Oh, there you go. So now I got the guy behind me. And so I'm going to end up uh, four betting him. He made it 690. I'm going to four bet him to something around three times that. Uh, 2K. To 2100. And I'm going to put him in the uh, in the situation where he's going to have to decide does he want to go all in or not. Well, well it was a little different than uh, the one against uh, Brannis where he had more than half his chips in. Where, okay, so we're all in it. Let's see what I'm up against. Aces, ace king, and we got small cards. No spade, please. A spade, look at that, red. Okay. Oh, did you see the three was dangerous too? What do you think? Do you think I was able to figure that out or without your help? <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to help you out here, Barry. Don't mention it. Don't mention it. It's all free. <laughs> yeah, so that was... That was nice. Do you? Uh, I can tell you something. You're a chip leader by twice as much as the guy in second place. <laughs> Not really, but you have a lot. Okay. It's always funny to watch the rail when you win. Now I got someone writing master, and they'll be writing that I own and stuff like that. Uh, and, of course, it's just a cold deck. If I'd had his ace-king, especially in this format, I'd end up, and we've seen me playing pretty fast, yeah. playing a lot of the hands, you know. It was just unlucky for him that he picked up an ace king. There was nobody outplayed anybody. You know, we just got our chips, and, and I had the better hand. Mm. Uh, but to the people on the rail, uh, I was now the the good player, and the other guy, I'm sure, was the idiot. <laughs> was the the worst hand. And if it was the other way around, I'd have people screaming at me for being a donkey, and you know, saying things like, "How can you be a team pro?" and Get all your chips in with Ace King and stuff like that. Mm. I have two nines on this hand, by the way. It's another good hand. Mm. It's almost like, I mean, especially now when wanting to play fast, would you prefer, you would of course prefer a call there, wouldn't you? With the two nines? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I mean, you're happy to take it down usually, but now you did, really didn't win anything. You didn't win anything. <laughs> It's it's kind of funny when you you know I you know I said I'm going to play fast and I have stuff to do uh, here I've three seven of spades that I fold. Um, what often happens is you get in a situation where you decide to play fast and then if you do get a hold, are lucky enough like now where I have something going in my favor and go to hold a lot of chips you still want to play well. Yeah. And I've seen so many times where I had to go somewhere and I played real fast and I got a hold of chips. And then I said, okay, this is getting serious. You know, I could uh, do something this tournament. So then I tightened it up a little bit and started to play well. And then, of course, lost all my chips and then said, well, why not keep playing with it like, like an, a maniac? Maybe that, I shouldn't have given that up. Not that I've really done anything that maniacal so far. No, no but I know what you're saying. It's... Uh, um 
it is it's typical. It's like uh, what do you call it, Murphy's Law or something? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah, it certainly is a form of that. Um, anyway, I've got another good hand. I've had a lot of playing hands. Ace, ten of spades. I've had the spades uh, enough uh, spades four times now. Right. And we'll raise it up to one eighty. Oops. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Try to finish this guy off. See what you left us. <clears throat> and I, I click. I don't know if that matters. Oh well, I got some domination again. He's got a flush. Oh, that's the worst card. card and he made the flush. Okay, well. Oh, what a sick turn card. Yeah, the good news is it was only a thousand. Uh, 1200 in that pot. That was about, yeah. besides a four, that was about as bad as card that you could ever see on turn. Right, yeah, it wasn't a good card. But, uh, and of course, everyone who plays, especially on the internet, they seem to think they're unlucky. And I could even look at that. Obviously, I think got dominated. I three to one favorite and I lost. But if you figure out my all in EV, I've just played two hands against him, ace king against kings, and now this one. I'm ahead of him in all in EV. Yeah. Because it's a much bigger pot the first time. So even by a mathematical calculation, I've actually been lucky, if you see what I'm saying. I definitely do. It's like you you would start going off like, Oh, you're so lucky <laughs> to him now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because people seem to feel that if they have the best hand, it should never lose. I I happen to have the best hand both times. Hmm. And if they, at any point in the hand, become the best hand, you always get people, if, if uh, you put in a lot of money and you have ace, king against ace, jack, court, you expect to win. Now, the ace, if you have ace, jack, and you flop the jack, but he rivers the king, now you'll say how lucky he is there, too, you know, because yeah. <laughs> you have the best hand some point of the way. But no, that's right. I actually, I'm one of the few people I know who I think I've been lucky at poker. You know, I mean, I see, you know, I play online like everyone else and get my two outers against me, but, you know, I have good things happen in my, in my direction also, which I notice. I think most people don't notice the good things that happen to them. Mm, and a lot of times the good thing, even if you are a tight player and have the best hand, it's the good thing is that the best hand held up, which it obviously does the right percentage of the time. Mm. In the long run. No, <clears throat> I find it pretty amazing how people raise their uh, expectations on on life. Let's say they they're in a pretty poor situation overall in life, and they do really good, and they make a lot of money from playing poker, for example, and then they have a downswing. They 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 moan and complain about their bad luck, even if they're still in very good shape. Do you know a lot of people like that? Yeah, well, it's just, it's just, <laughs> hey, hey, what did Alex say? Scratch that if it got heard. No, not, I, I didn't I'm hear not what you say. Alex said something, but no, but it's just like human nature. Oh, look at this. Another good hand. I ace king off suit mm -hmm. and I, I'll be playing this there for stacks against anyone. Yeah. I'm hoping someone's going to raise this short stack uh, and put him all in. Like uh, I got my Brennus friend over here. But right. no, it's just me and him, so... Yeah, I guess you go go for it. Oh, I didn't even raise enough to put them all in, which was a mistake in case I timed out. Yeah. And I got him dominated again. Let's see uh, if he can make a straight and tie me with a deuce. No, he oh, wasn't okay. able to. All right, good game, Fulma. <laughs> he got it in, in three times with the worst hand. All right. Mm. Yeah, okay. Um, how, how much, uh, well, you said you play... Uh, equal time, equal amount of time online as live. How much is that a week on on average? Um, well, I travel and do other things, so I mean, obviously there is an average, but I would guess twenty five hours of each is an average. So fifty hours a week you play poker, something like that. I would think so. That's a lot. Yeah, Alex hasn't reacted to that. That sound right? Spend more time than you do. Yeah, Alex is. Alex spends more. 
Alex plays online all the time. I have another decent hand, 10 eight of spades. But it's gone raise and re-raise, so I guess I have to give it up. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, Alex probably plays 80 hours a no, week online. Does she really? Yeah. She doesn't play that much live, does she? She hasn't been lately, it seems, because what she does is she has work to do, and she does her work and then plays a screen or two of poker. That's kind of a normal thing for her to do. Mm -hmm. And so she she plays more poker than I do. All right. That's good. Have you, uh, you told me last time or, or the last couple of times that she has, she has become really good. Yeah, uh, you know, she's uh, winning a few thousand here and there. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, there was one time plays. in in Monte Carlo, I think she so, sort of saved you or something. She was yeah, something. she kept making enough money to buy me <laughs> into tournaments that I well save me or not, since I end up not doing anything with the money she won. So yeah, she said I stole all her money. Is all yeah, I did. You, you, so it's not like we came out plus when the whole thing was over. It's like you, you go and dunk it off, and she goes to the mine, to, to the coal yeah. mine. Yeah, if you can't find a woman who can support you, then what's the point? That's the way I look at it. <laughs> support your poker habit. Um, but yeah, yeah, I did a lot of that. I emptied out her uh, her poker stars account mm. uh, with buy-ins in the live tournaments. I see. Yeah, that's nice. I tried to interview uh, Alex a few times, but she's sort of uh, camera shy. Yeah, she won't do it. It's really too bad, actually. You know, that I don't know if I told you that, but Doogie chapter, you know, we can talk about it. Can we? Uh, you know, that I, you read it and help me out. And uh, you were my resident, uh, you were, I needed, I had some strong players read it. And I, so I also had you read it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's funny. I, I mean, uh, tell me, about, so you can talk about it now? Is it fine? T tell us what, what it is. About it. It'll come out in a book eventually. All right. So uh, what, what is this? Uh, but anyway, so you got to read it. I was, I was intentionally needling you. Ricard, about your skill. I hope you're okay with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. But anyway, I wanted you know varying people to read it, uh, various uh, levels of players read it. So I so I you read it also. And uh, initially, the way I had done this is I did it on one of those chat things like you and I have, uh, where I just told it to Alex. A lot of times, it seems these days when I do something, I'll do it in an audio form, and then Alex will write it up, and then I'll start editing it. Yeah. So I did it actually in a chat with Alex, that chapter. That's how it started. I see. And it was really funny. I wanted to put it on Poker Road because there were some really funny things where she's always going to be sarcastic with me if I say something. Mm 